<laughs> Hi, Toaster here from Aussie 8. Um, we're um, in Karatha at the moment, uh, staying in this camp campground, and we're about to head to uh, Exmouth tomorrow. It's one of the longer trips that we're going to do without access to fast um, charging. Uh, so I thought I might do a, um, a video of the preparing, planning, and the actual day itself um, to, to give you a feel for what it's like. And for a ICE car, that's a regular petrol car, let's um, get up the old Google Maps here. You can see the distance down there is yeah, 545 kilometers, and it would take a petrol car five hours and 41 minutes. So how long will it take us in our Tesla Model Y to do that um, distance tomorrow? Let's, um, as part of the planning, let's do some cal calculations. Uh, let's jump in the car. So right now we're at 85% state of charge and we we're trickle charging here at the campground. I've got about another five hours and 50 minutes to complete the charge. So that will be fine. Uh, we should be good to go in the morning. But what I do want to show you is that the Teslas also have a um, range estimate here. Uh, some people call it a guessometer. So right now at this state of charge, we've got 359 kilometers of range. But the thing to keep in mind with is that it is a guessometer. In fact, if you think back a couple of decades with petrol cars, they didn't have range estimators. They just had a fuel gauge and it said it was full, half full, empty, and you're in the red. More modern cars have added uh, range estimators, but they really are, even for petrol cars, they are based on your driving habits, how fast you're going. The same is true for EVs. The range here is an estimate based on ideal conditions, and uh, you know, it's unlikely we will get those tomorrow. So actually the first thing that I did in my car was just tap that and just stick with percentage because the range is going to vary all the time go up and down but that percentage will drop slowly or fast as the as the car's state of charge gets consumed so my rear wheel drive has a 60 kilowatt hour battery there is also a safety buffer i think it's actually another two kilowatt hours but let's just say it's 60 kilowatt hours so that's my usable capacity if you've watched my previous video on watt hours per kilometer, that's a very useful guide as to how far you can go when doing uh, range estimates, especially if your drives are very similar. And they are out, out here in the remote parts of, of Australia. We're getting very stable consumption. If I have a look at the trips here in the computer, you can see that for our lap of Australia, we've done six 10,600 odd kilometers and our average energy usage is 162 watt hours per kilometer. So what you can do is take that 60,000 um, kilowatt hours that I've got and divide it by 162 and that will give you the uh, rough range that I can have tomorrow if I use have the same energy consumption. Tomorrow's um, trip is longer than that so we will have to charge there is no fast DC charging between here and Exmouth, so we will have to use AC charging. So let's um, jump into the PlugShare app and have a look at um, what our charging options are. There is a uh, roadhouse here, which is pretty close to uh, Karatha, so we'll probably skip that. The next stop is Nanu Tara, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is 275 kilometers away. It has ball sockets, so that would be your trickle charging and also a three phase. So we're hoping to use the three phase. That will give us about 65 kilometers per hour range back. So that means we'll probably have to stay there for a leisurely lunch of three to four hours. If the three phase is not working or somebody else is using it, uh, then we will have to revert to trickle charging and we could be there you know, eight, nine hours uh, and that will really blow out our day. Hopefully that doesn't happen. The other thing before starting a trip is to actually check the check-ins at the location and make sure that somebody has been there recently. It looks like Harold has a few weeks ago. So that means it was working back then and hopefully is working tomorrow. 
the backup plan for the three phases out is to use um, the powered sites. Then it's on to Exmouth and we hope to do that. That's about 280 k's from Nanutara. So it's just straight on to X, Xmouth. However, if the range is looking like we may not make it, then we'll stop at this location here, the Ballara Station Stay. It is only powered site, so it would be a trickle charge, but that would be like our plan C. So if we need a boost, we'll stop there. So if all goes according to plan, three and a half hours from Karatha to Nanutara, and then a three to four hour charge there, and then another three hours to Exmouth. So it's gonna be a long day. The uh, other tip um, that I can give you is with the uh, trickle charging, if it's available at your accommodation, keep the, keep the car charged right until the last minute. So load the car and don't unplug it because the, the car, once it's the doors start opening, starts to heat up. But there's also a setting in the, on the computer. I can show it to you here. This is the preconditioning. So you can set the car for a departure time and it will preheat the battery if needed and also uh, put the climate control on and set it to you know, 22, 23 degrees, whatever you want. And again, that's all happening while the car is still plugged in and so it's not using any power from the battery. All right, we'll see you out there. Looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day for a long drive. The um, car is... Um, Packed to the gills. Barney's in position. Morning, Barney. Spare wheel that Elon didn't give us. So we're navigating today to Exmouth, Western Australia. Calculating route. Let's um, edit the trip and add a stop at Nanu Nanutara. Western Australia. We'll get to Nanutara with 12% and then to Exmouth with negative 55%. So those are just estimates. We'll see how that how that pans out um, as the day unfolds. All right, so it's just coming up to 7 a.m., which was when we were predicting to leave. It's 26 degrees. Car is uh, preconditioned. It's charged to 100%. I think we're good to go. We're we're about uh, halfway to Nanu Tara. We are currently at 63% state of charge. We're um, going to arrive there with an estimate now of 18%. Um, and I guess the reason why that's improved, or a couple of reasons why that's improved, is that I'm, I'm driving like a granny. We're currently going at 80 kilometers an hour. We're only doing that when it's, um, when it's safe. Um, in fact, there's a car coming up behind me now, so I'll speed up to, to 90. I've put the climate at 23. Normally I'd have it at 22, so that's helping as well. Um, the outside temperature is 34, which is probably ideal for a battery. Batteries love the sort of warmish temperature. Um, yeah, so we're currently tracking pretty well. We're still going to arrive in Exmouth with minus 49%, so we've definitely got to do something about that. Um, so if I look at since the last charge, we've gone 136 kilometers. We've used 21 kilowatt hours of the battery's capacity, which is just over a third, and we're averaging 156 watt hours per kilometer, which is slightly better than the overall average for our entire trip, which is, which is pretty good. The other useful thing in a Tesla is this energy graph. Um, so what it's saying is for this trip so far, we've consumed 37.8% of the battery um, and we're tracking pretty well. The live projection is that we'll arrive in Nanutara with 18%. Um, and then down here it shows me of that 38% that we've already used, 33.8% of it was for driving, um, which is actually better than predicted. The climate has used up 2.1%. That's kind of just line ball, and then the others are all line ball too. It does tell me here that um, there's a wind coming up from the south. We're, we're heading south, so we're heading into that wind, and it's cost us 1.1% of that of that consumed energy. So overall, we're uh, tracking well, um, and we'll give you an update once we get to Nanu Tara. 
Well, we've arrived. Um, Lisa's just gone inside the roadhouse to see if we can um, use their three-phase plug. Um, but we've arrived with 25% state of charge, which is much better than the original projection of 11%. Uh, so that's good. So down there since charge, we've driven 267 kilometers. We've used 42 kilowatt hours of the battery, just over 50% of it and we've averaged 156 watt hours per kilometer. So right now it's suggesting if we don't charge here we would get to Exmouth with minus 42 percent so we definitely need to charge. Um, I expect we'll be here for at least um, three to four hours. It's kind of perverse we're um, actually going to charge from a diesel generator today which is kind of unfortunate so that's what the noise is in the background. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get my uh, Fronius three phase out and uh, I'll show you how to how we set up a charging session. So this is the uh, Fronius unit we're going to use. So let's see if we can get it uh, connected. Normally we try and put these collars on just to make sure it doesn't fall out, but they don't always want to work. These plugs can be a bit old and crusty, especially in the sun. Um, but I'll turn the power on. Hopefully we'll get a ring of lights around. Yep, got a ring of lights. All right, so I'll just get my um, Type 2 cable. This end into the Fronius. And the other end into the car. And I don't know if you can see the display there. It says we're charging. It's like it's starting to ramp up there. Three amps out of 10 amps. Hopefully we'll get a bit more than 10 amps today. All right, well, we're charging, which is a good sign. Um, I might just check a few settings, just make sure we're getting the full 11 kilowatts. Just an update. In the Fronius app, I had the max current set at um, 10 amps per phase. Um, so I've changed it to 16 amps and restarted the session, and now I'm getting 11 kilowatts. Uh, so if we were to stay here until we fully charged, uh, it would take 4 hours and 15 minutes. But I think we'll leave sooner than that. I'll go and do some, do some calculations. But yeah, so this is the max um, rate you can get with a Tesla on, on AC. It's not too bad, um, but obviously, you know, once fast DC infrastructure starts rolling out across the country, you know, charge stops like this um, will become a thing of the past, which will be good. So while you're for charging for four hours, you can DIY picnic here at the uh, roadhouse. Doesn't look too bad there, coach. Left, leftovers from the accommodation we were at before. Oak and shell. Yeah. What's left in the fridge. Nice one. And if you're um, looking for the best tasting hummus, <laughs> highly recommend Pill Pill. Hey Barney, how about um, a game of uh, backgammon to pass away the time here? Then about three and a half hours of actual charging. Um, so if you come and have a look here, you can see that we are on 91% state of charge um, and according to the navigator to get to the address in Exmouth, where the estimate is uh, 23%. Um, I'm actually going to increase the speed on this next leg um, to 90 to 100 kilometers an hour, so our consumption will go up, but we have enough of a buffer that we should be good. All right, we'll give you an update um, on way or in Exmouth. Can you eat your popsicle? I'm going to eat my, try and cool down. See the sweat on my brow? I'm going to eat my popsicle. 41 degrees it is, peeps. Mm. Yum. Yum. Bye. Bye. All right, we're um, halfway between Nanu, Tara, and Exmouth. So here the time is 4.36 p.m. We're at 52% uh, state of charge. Uh, we've driven 134 kilometers in an hour and a half, and we've used an average of 167 watt hours per kilometer. So that's a bit higher than uh, the last leg. Uh, I think one of the reasons why is that we're 
not driving like grannies, well, we're still driving like old people, but uh, so 90 kilometers an hour, we still got the climate control at 23%. When we left the roadhouse, it was suggesting 23% would be the arrival status charge in Exmouth. Um, but now, as you can see, we're down to 18. And if I open up the energy graph, you can see a bit more information as to why we're using up more energy. Besides the speed, I think the other thing that's contributing is that there's um, a bit more wind, the 12 kilometer hour wind that cost us 5.7% on this trip. So we've consumed 40.7 so far, which is for using the climate as well, is 5.2% more than, than predicted. Um, but we're on, yeah, we're fine. There, there was a plan B to stop at, um, I think it's Ballara Station and do a charge there if needed. But based on this, we'll easily make it into Exmouth. It will be um, a long day and we'll give you a final update uh, when we get there. All right, we're um, about 20 k's out of Exmouth. Uh, so it's time to give a summary for this um, leg. Um, so we are currently at 21% state of charge, coming up to 6 p.m. Um, we are due there in 16 minutes and the state of charge is expected to be 16%. So we're still driving at 90 kilometers an hour, still got the climate at 23 degrees Celsius. So you can see the summary for this segment is 255 kilometers, just shy of three hours, and 157 watt hours per kilometer which is a little bit better than the um, first half of the segment if we look at the um, energy graph yeah i think the main contributor to the range decreasing for a while there was this wind which cost us overall eight percent on the, on the trip so it's definitely something to keep in mind um, if you are cutting it fine with um, consumption that you know things you can't control like like the wind can um, can eat into to your range yeah so that um is pretty much it for that segment it's probably time to to wrap up this uh video it's been a long day for us we've uh been in the car for 11 hours so in terms of the original plan we kind of we, in fact we stuck to the plan you want fast dc charging comes to these parts you can cut that four hour charge down to 45 minutes maybe an hour max and you could certainly go go faster as well um, because you're not so worried about um, conserving your range um, yeah I wanted to arrive at Exmouth you know with about 20 percent because maybe when we arrive there we can't charge straight away so if you need to run an errand that night or in the morning you know you want to have a bit of buffer or worst case you know there's a fire up ahead and you can't go any further, can't get into Exmouth and so we'd have to U-turn and go back somewhere else. So you definitely need some buffer. Um, but yeah, I think with fast DC, um, you know, those buffers can be smaller um, and your trip can be quicker. So I hope you found this uh, video useful um, and hope to see you out there or on the next video. See ya, bye.